Here's Larry Coates talking about proper padding. Hi, I'm going to explain to you today about the pad that I've got on the market. I call it my balance pad. It's a pad that I designed several years ago and it helps make your saddle fit your horse's back better. Whether you ride a Coates or any other brand you want, it works uh, all the way to different. But so let's get into, I've got two pads. This is my heavy pad and this is my thinner pad. Basically what it is, is just basically uh, showing you that if you've got a, a, a good back horse with a higher wither, you want to use the heavy pad. If you've got a fat back horse, more of a mutton wither type deal, then you want to use a lighter pad so that the saddle will fit uh, one horse or the other, same difference, uh, by just changing your pad out. And a lot of people don't realize how important a pad is to a horse's back. A pad, if you've got a good saddle fit on a horse's back, that's great, but you never want to over pad uh, uh, you know a saddle on a horse so what we want to do is that we want to try to keep the uh, the saddle close to the horse's back so what I've done here is I designed a pad that is actually thicker around the outside of the skirts of the saddle and actually where the bars I'll show you on this tree right here this is what we call the bars of the saddle and this thing right here, this is what hits a horse's back first before anything else. And I'll explain to you on this saddle right here. If you look at this saddle right here, you can see the bar imprint of this saddle right here. This is a brand new saddle, and you can see the bar imprint. So if you threw this saddle on a horse's back, the first thing would, you would hit would be the bars on this saddle. And then we've got the rest of the skirt out here, and the reason why we put a skirt on a saddle just to help uh, balance uh, the saddle out from moving sideways or forward or backwards. So in other words, we need to make even contact from here to here. Well, in that case, what I did is I built up around the outside of the bars. So in other words, when you set this tree or saddle on your horse's back, the bars hit here and then the skirts hit here evenly. So that's why we call it the balance pad. So what it's doing it's actually balancing pressure from here all the way around the outside edge. So when you balance the pressure out, what you're doing is you're releasing the pressure here and you're putting it out on the outside edge. So when you're releasing pressure where their pressure is, it lets the horse's back breathe and you're going to have less pressure points. So when you have less pressure points, you're going to have moisture and you won't, you'll have a dry, uh, a wet back horse because a dry spot on a horse, like say a big dry spot, is pressure points. Pressure points is not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either. And so we always want a horse's back to breathe. So if you have a troubled back horse and you've got a saddle, I don't care what brand it is, it doesn't have to be a coach, and you don't have the money to buy a saddle to fit a horse's back, if you get a pad like this here, whether it's an off-brand saddle, and you'll get it to where it'll balance the pressure out. You release, release the pressure here. We can eliminate dry spots and you're gonna, you're gonna have half the battle won right there. And so that's why we always try to have a good pad for your uh, uh, saddle on your horse's back. And, uh, you know, and another reason why I really like to have the close contact on our pad where it's thinner here, thicker here, is that it actually lets the saddle of the bars right here sit real close to the horse's back because if you get a, a tree that fits a horse's back and fits down close to the horse's back you're going to have less movement because if the movement is what causes friction on a horse's back so if you've got a whole saddle that starts moving rolling from side to side moving from front to back whatever it does the further away that you have, if you pad up thick, the further away you got the saddle away from the horse's back, the worse you're gonna have, the more burn marks you're gonna have on a horse's back. So therefore, if we can keep the saddle closer to the horse's back and make it more stable to where it doesn't move near as much, you're gonna have less problems with your saddle on your horse's back, whichever saddle it may, you know, may be. So that's why it's real close uh, to have real important to have a saddle uh, that fits a horse's back as close as possible. Now, uh, the main thing is on a on a saddle. If you really really want to know before you put your pad on your horse, if you want to know if your saddle fits 
and then after you put it on your, your pad and then your saddle, you're going to find out what the difference is. So you always want to put your saddle on a horse bareback with no pad. If you've got a good fit, then you want to use least amount of pad as possible. So in other words, if you've got a saddle, you put it on your horse's back and it sits on there and it looks good, you take it off and if you throw your pads on there, whether it be two pads or one pad or whatever, and then throw your saddle on there and it doesn't look good to you, that means that you're not padding right. So in other words, so you know that's why it's very important to understand the right way of padding and the wrong way of padding because not only having a good saddle to fit your horse's back, the pads are very, very important even with a, a good saddle or a bad saddle. So just, you know, if you ever have any questions, just throw your saddle on a horse bareback, look at it and you want to see it balanced. If it's running downhill, that means you're having problems in the front end and it's going to dig in his shoulders and then we're going to, you know, we're going to have problems with the shoulder blades. It's going to pinch him and everything else. So it's too wide. So we got to narrow it up, pick it up a little bit, get that saddle, saddle balanced. So if you throw your saddle on your horse and you look at it a perspective and it's balanced, then we've got a pretty good fit. You're already over 50% as a good fit. So then when you take it off and put a pad on there, and if it's still the same way, but it sits down close to his horse's back, then you're not gonna have near as much trouble that way than if you have a thick pad and a wide saddle that runs downhill and digging into his shoulder. And I've had this pad on the market for several years, and I've actually proven to people that had dry spots on a horse and we've taken and unsaddled him and put my pad on him and saddled him up and we got closer contact, closer fit, and we've, we've created less problems with it. And so that's my main theory. And I worry more about the horse's back than I do anything. And so the main thing is, is every one of my saddles that I build, you know, it ain't gonna fit every horse's back. So, I designed this pad to help fit my saddles better to the horse's back and everybody else's saddles to the horse's back. So anyway, but the main thing is, is that I've got two pads here. The thin one is for more of a fat back horse. The, he the gray one is for more of a heavy, heavy back horse or thinner, like a, a high withered horse. So if you got one saddle, two horses, and you can't buy another saddle, then you've got two pads that the saddle usually will fit both horses. So, anyway. Larry, can you address the over padding, what that can cause? Okay, that's, that's what I was talking about earlier, an over pad, now I'm talking about over pad, we're talking an inch and a half to two inches thick pad. And what that does, that creates a lot of friction when a saddle moves, because what you do is you're lifting that saddle off that horse's back, and what you're doing, is you're getting that the bar of the saddle too far away from that horse's back. So if that saddle moves just a little bit, it's gonna move a whole lot more down on the bottom side underneath the pad where, where it moves more. So you're gonna create a lot more problem. And plus, if you've got a saddle that fits close to the horse's back, and if you've got less pad, and when that saddle gets close to that horse's back, you're gonna have less movement. It's kind of like wearing two pairs of socks on a pair of boots. If you buy a pair of boots and they're too big for you, and you, you pad up by putting two pairs of socks on or three pairs of socks on, your foot is still going to slide in there. But you're going to get more blisters from that than if you get a pair of boots that fit you with one pair of thin pair of socks that fit you real good and your foot's not going to move. And you're not going to create no blisters. So basically that's the a, that's a easiest concept that I can say right there on, on uh, and, you know, over padding a, a saddle to a horse's back is like trying to wear two or three pairs of socks to make a pair of boots fit. So if you've got something that fits, you're going to have less problems with it. Larry, now could either pad uh, work for roping or cutting or trail riding? Would they work for all of those events? Yeah, Laura, this, this pad right here, both these pads right here are 32 inches long. That'll work for cutting trail riding, roping, raining, cutting, whatever you want to do. I'm in all those events. Now, I do have a barrel pad. The barrel pad's the same thing, but it's actually even thinner because a barrel pad does not have to be near as heavy. So we, we've got a little bit thinner and we, we're, 
we've got two barrel pads. One's a 28 inch and one's a 30 inch. So I have two different types of pads. I've got a 32, a 30, and a, and a 28, which is my barrel pads. So I've got barrels and then these here would be any kind of performance horses that you want to use in any of that matter, trail riding, uh, cutting, roping, or whatever. And it would work for all that. And like I said, there again, in no matter what field you're in, if you don't know what pad that you need, the heavy one or the thin one, put your saddle on your horse's back, bareback, and if this is what we call the gullet of the saddle right here. And if you put the saddle on your horse's bareback and he clears right underneath the backbone of the horse, then you're going to need the thin pad. If it bumps him here and sits down too low on him, then you're going to want the heavier pad to pick it up off the the back of the horse just a little bit. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Thank you.